What's going on guys? It is TC and let me just start this episode off by saying happy Mother's Day to all those beautiful mothers out there. My mother, my grandmother, my Nona, my Auntie Anna, Nikki, Helen, Rosa, and Pashkalina. Uh, fencing uh, 17's mom uh, says her name's Sarah. Sarah, uh, happy Mother's Day to your mom. Um... Tyler, happy uh, Mother's Day to your mom as well. And if you guys want to have uh, you ever shout out on this channel, you can go to our Instagram, the underscore winner circle underscore 22, comment on our posts, uh, and we'll be able to put you in that thread of people that we're going to uh, mention. Uh, I figured out, I figured we're going to start doing a, maybe a birthday list of uh, some people, shout them out, whether they're famous, family, friends, uh People who watch this show or subscribe to us uh, or follow us on our Instagram, whatever that's going to be, we're going to end up shouting you guys out here on the channel just to get a little bit more uh, interaction with you guys because while this isn't really a conversation, I don't want this to be a, a one-sided ordeal. I want to hear what you guys say and I do want to get some feedback from you. I want you to feel like you're involved and we care about you. So make sure you guys are hitting us up on our Instagram as well as subscribing here on YouTube. We're trying to get to 50 subscribers so that we can live stream for you guys. But without further ado, let's get into the topic of today's video. And no, it's not just mothers. However, they are very important. And I hope you say a happy Mother's Day to yours. We are going to be talking about the Chicago Bulls. Now, I know what you're thinking. TC, the season's over. We lost. It's, it's done. What are you going to talk about? Well, when all things come to an end, I think it's a good idea to get a recap to get an, a perspective about what's going on with the uh, organization and, and the situation. So let's talk about those Chicago Bulls. Now, I already want to, I want to start off with this, all right? Anybody that thought the Bulls were going to get swept and are upset they didn't win one at home, I don't want to hear it, okay? I don't, don't want to hear if, ands, buts, or like the tidal wave of emotions. No, no, you don't deserve those tidal waves because you didn't believe they could even win. Me, on the other hand, I thought they could win one game in Chicago, and I'm stealing that game because, let's be honest, nobody, no one in their right mind would have suggested Chicago would steal one in Milwaukee, all right? No one. So for them to steal one in Milwaukee and not win one in Chicago, that is what blew my mind because I thought, okay, not only are they going to be at the home court, they have all this momentum going into game three. I bet you they could come out and they could win game three. They didn't win game three, and I'm like, well, they're not going to win game four now. That's the game I originally thought they were going to win, but uh, no. You had to make TC look stupid over here. <laughs> And you had to go and win game two instead of game four and then just go on and lose game five anyway. So thanks. But uh, either way, I guess that I got nothing to complain about. You know, us as Bulls fans, we don't have anything to complain about for this season. And honestly, I know what you're thinking. What do you mean? We were dominating in the beginning of the season. We were first place by a wide margin. Yeah, we also had one of the easiest schedules in the conference, in the whole NBA. So honestly, we underperformed in the beginning of the season. We had a terrible loss to the Knicks, the Rockets, some a few other bad teams. And those two games, those two games alone meant a lot down the stretch. In fact, I think that really is what would have made the difference for us being able to overcome the Rockets for that uh, uh, next uh, fifth seed. But of course, no. You know, we're over here choking games that Chicago should have won. And that's just a typical thing for a Chicago sports team. You know, I mean, say what you want about other franchises, other teams. Sure, it happens to them. But it is just all too familiar for us here in Chicago. So, honestly, that was my only disappointment. There was a lot of games out there this season where they were under 500. And, or just barely hovering over, and the Bulls would lose it. It's like, you know, I understand, you know, this is a new team. You got to let you guys gel, but you can't lose to a team 
that that's struggling to win on by themselves. Okay, you guys are obviously talented. You got to be able to take those games home. You know, the Pelicans should not beat you. The Rockets should not beat you. Those are teams that should be obvious wins. But for whatever reason, Chicago couldn't get it done. But I'm not here to rag on them. Let's be honest. Nobody expected a, uh, a run as well as they had for this season. Now, I know injuries stacked up, uh, health and safety protocols came into play, and we really started to see Chicago crumble in 2022 in the second half of the season. Sure, of course, that's going to happen, especially when two superstars go down, you know, when a bunch of players go on health and safety protocols, where you got players going in and out of the lineup for sorenesses. It's just going to happen. But let's give those Bulls all the credit they deserve. They went out, they played hard, they really stepped up. Every, I mean, Io, Io looks fantastic. Kobe White, Kobe White is a guy you got to be looking at. Same thing with Vooch, but overall, I think, I think they did a fantastic job this season. Tristan Thompson pickup, probably not the best thing, but at the same time, honestly, for for what they had available and for what they did, you got to be happy with the outcome. Now, I hope this offseason they address that big man issue because Tristan Thompson, you know, probably a little too old at this point to be the guy that we're relying on to be that force down in the paint. Just not going to happen. Vooch, obviously not comfortable or able to be that fast, you know, lockdown guy in the paint. He's just not. He's a little slow on defense. He needs help down there if if he's going to stay on the team. I personally don't want him there, but I get it. He scores about 20 a night. Rebounds pretty okay. He gets you a double-double every night. I understand that, but hey, you know, I want someone that could play at least both ways okay versus a guy that's going to shoot 16 threes, make five of them, get out rebounded by a power forward, and then have a power forward dominate him in the paint on the other end. That's not what I want. You know, personally, I want a guy who's going to be able to box out, rebound really nicely, and get the job done. You know, I don't care if he scores 20 points or 7 points. If he's out there doing the job that we need him to, playing lockdown D, controlling the, the, the boards, that's all I want from him as a player. I don't need all these other bells and whistles, the ability to shoot a three-pointer. That's what we have a shooting guard for. That's what you got, you know, all those smaller guys on the court for. Is it nice if he could shoot a three? Absolutely. But is that an essential? No, it's not. And I don't see why it needs, why it is, why it's a thing. Now, like I said, it's a good asset to have. But overall, I would like a guy that locks it down. Vooch doesn't lock it down. Kobe White kind of falling off, especially in the playoffs, not playing at that level. We, we kind of needed him here in Chicago to be doing because he kind of fell down. Io had to step up. And, his, and even though I, I said Io did pretty well, he wasn't ready for that position, especially given the fact that there were so many injuries at the position uh, he's at before him. So he went from being a guy that got 10 minutes of playing time to the guy that got 20, 22 minutes of playing time. So I personally don't think he was 100% ready for that, but hey, he got the opportunity and I think he made the most of it. So shout out to my boy Io. Really appreciate him. DeMar DeRozan, you had a fan fantastic season man you dominated you took over Zach Levine I know this was your team I know you were the guy holding it down but DeMar came in and he did better now I'm not trying to discredit what you do I'm not trying to say that you're not a good player I'm not trying to say that you aren't supposed to be here in Chicago what I am saying is when you got a guy who's an obviously greater talent who obviously plays better than you you gotta give up that pride man you cannot go through basketball, you cannot go through life expecting to be the best, the greatest, get treated the best, etc., unless you are. And unfortunately for a lot of us, we could be fantastic at what we do. We could be the 0.1% of everybody who's ever done it. But at the same time, there's somebody who's going to do it just that much better. And that's something that we have to accept. And the people that are able to accept it, They'll go out and win championships. The people that can't, they're going to be the kind of guys 
that we look back on and we always wonder, why did this guy not get a ring? Why is this such a great talent that had the ability to drive, the ability to shoot, the ability to shoot the three ball, pretty decent defense? Where, where did that all go? And when, you, when we look back and we see, oh, he wanted to be number one, dude, you got to swallow that pride. And I, I, coming from me, I know uh, I'm a very prideful person. So, you know, I don't got a lot to say on that. But as a guy that, that, that is playing for millions of dollars, a guy who is trying to win a championship this upcoming season, you got to be able to accept that there's a guy that's better than you. And it's not like it's a night and day difference. It's not like, uh, it's not a big difference, but it obviously is a favor towards the other guy. And that's not an issue. You're still one of the premier guys in the league. You're still a great offensive player. You still play defense better than DeMar, even though DeMar's defense isn't terrible. You're just better, right? Like, I'm not trying to knock DeMar, but I got to give you that credit. You're a way better passer. You're way better at getting steals. DeMar has his moments, don't get me wrong. But overall, Zach Levine, way better at getting steals. So I'm not trying to throw anybody under the bus. I'm not trying to say anybody's the issue. But as a player, you got to recognize that it's not all about you. It's about the team. And if there's somebody else on the team that's better, you got to accept that. And finally... Let's just all remember to give a thank you to the Bulls, right? This is a season that nobody expected. I mean, sure, we thought they were going to go out and be competitive. Sixth in the, in the conference is kind of what people were expecting anyway. But honestly, this was showing up. This was a great season. And honestly, if injuries didn't plague the Bulls, this could have been a very different year, especially with Ball being out for the basically the second half of the season, Crusoe being out for a quarter of the season, all those guys in and out of the lineup due to injuries. Maybe Zach Levine would have been out, you know, when his knee was bothering him permanently and we wouldn't have this issue. That's the last thing I wanted to talk about was Zach Levine. I know you're a prideful man. I know you want to play basketball, but I would have much rather you rather seen you come back next season 100% healthy, especially with all the injuries going on right now than have you play in this moment. Now, I thank you for, for doing that in a way. You know, it, it takes a lot to put the team ahead of yourself, but at the same time, you know, that could be putting yourself above the team just because now, how is that going to hurt your longevity? How is that going to hurt your explosiveness, et cetera, et cetera? I wanted you on the team for years down the line, not just this year. So, you know, I hope you bounce back fast, and I hope you get a speedy recovery, my guy. Uh, but overall, can't be upset with the Chicago Bulls. Shout out to those Bulls. Make sure you guys give them the love that they deserve. Hopefully next year we could see an NBA Finals championship here in Chicago. But until then, this has been TC with TC Talks. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Happy Mother's Day.